we'd like to introduce to you Dirt Caps. Dirt uh, Caps in the building. Yo, man, what's up? Welcome. Welcome to Brooklyn. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having us, man. Yeah, really cool. Welcome down. First time in Red Hook? Yeah, definitely. Hook, yeah. Not Brooklyn, though. You guys are always in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, your second time in uh, New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah right? it actually is, yeah. Yeah, the big city for us. If you compare it to Amsterdam, this is really big. So what brings <laughs> you to New York this time? Uh, we're doing uh, studio sessions at uh, Downtown Studios in uh, near Broadway and doing studio sessions with a lot of guys to write new songs. So you just came here to work on music? Uh, not alone because we're also going to New Orleans and Dallas to uh, do two shows. Oh, nice. Yeah. So is this part of a US tour that you guys are doing? Well, to be honest, like, now with our two shows, what it was supposed to, we were supposed to play this weekend as well, but like the show we had, it didn't match like uh, our wishes or like the wishes from the agency. So okay. we already were planning on going here. And um, yeah, it's been a good week so far. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. So um, a little bit about our show. You know, we like to bring uh, DJs, up, DJs down to Red Hook. Um, and we like to really find out about your roots. We want to know mm -hmm. how you guys got into the game, how you guys started, yeah. what was your inspirations. Um, so why don't you talk to us about how each one of you guys actually got the bug to start DJ? Wow. Yeah, well, for me, it was, uh, I was maybe 12 years old or something like that. And my, I have a sister, which is, she's three years younger than me. Okay. So she was about nine. And then um, in Holland, it's tradition to, um, when, you're, you, when you have your birthday, you throw a party for your friends. So like when you're little, when you're six, seven, you go swimming with each other, <laughs> doing like really cool stuff. But then. Uh, like when you get a little bit older, um, yeah, we call it primary school. Yep. It's, it's quite different than in America, but you know what I mean. And she, she wanted to do like a party for, for a dancing party for for, uh, for for her classmates. And then I was just like putting on music on the CD player because I always liked that. And then I bought two uh, two players with like and um, yeah, I started. Messing around with it. And so you started on records? Or yeah, yeah, started on records. So Technique 1200s, were they first? Or no, no, I had the stage lines. They were like bell driven. So if you wanted to scratch, it was like, mm. <laughs> that was really funny. And yeah. then I, uh, yeah, then I met Max and we started doing it together. And it was like on a practical notice because I had, I, I bought CD players, new marks, so no pioneers. Yeah. And Max had the sound system, yeah. so we were like talking, man, we should do this together. Yeah. Big plans, 30, 40 years old, and yeah. So Max, how did you start DJing? You well, it's almost the same. It's like a, 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 like a party from a school, we started playing. And um, yeah, I was always interested in, in technique and speakers and that kind of stuff. So, so you were the technical guy. Yep, and my dad taught me how to build speakers. Really? Yeah, so I started out with that, and I built this enormous speakers because yeah the bigger the better <laughs> and um, yeah I, m I met Danny uh, like in the I think the the, f the first class of primary school okay yeah and um, yeah then there were there were parties being thrown and yeah we hooked up together just to um, how do you say it yeah just to start uh, start DJing at these parties, and I brought the speakers, he bought the... Now how old were you guys around this? Uh, 15, yeah, 16, okay, yeah. something like that. And our, our parents drove us to all these parties. To be honest, we didn't have a clue what we were doing, no. <laughs> like technical-wise. So then you had no clue it was going to turn into something like this? Oh, no, not at we, all. We, we, we wanted to. Yeah, we like wanted we to. Wanted. We are very driven, we've always been, but... And what type of music were you guys playing back then? Back then, it was mainly like, yeah, we played at school parties, so it was... Pop music, but well, we were really inspired by Laidback Luke. Like yeah. he's also very big in uh, the states. Like when we were 16 years old, we weren't actually allowed to go to parties, but we did. We lived close to the beach in Holland, and they threw these amazing beach parties where Chesto and Laidback Luke were playing there. So yeah, we literally jumped over the fence and <laughs> watched those guys play, and it was such a cool era because the whole Dutch sound just came up, and we were part of that. So we were very inspired by that sound and we started working at the same time as Afrojack like Nick's first release was actually a remix for us so that's crazy to see where yeah. he is now and that yeah. we are trying to catch up with him but yeah. like yeah no good times well that whole Dutch sound I mean sort of took over for a very long time I mean, well the, f the funny thing is Layback Luke had an online forum so Steve Angelo was there 
Afrojack, uh, Avicii. Avicii, all these guys were sending mu music to each other. Uh, we were there too, so everybody was like uh, criticizing everybody's music, and that's how we learned to produce music as well. And that's how the yeah, f f in my opinion, a bit of the Dutch sound started. I remember Feta Legrand putting out his first record. Put your hands up for Detroit, and oh everybody's yeah, that, was a, that was a monster. Yeah. That was a monster hit, but everybody was like criticizing. Ah, man, I don't know. And then what's the B side of a record? Yeah, right? was yeah. the B side of a record, and then uh, a Dutch DJ Eric E started playing that, and it became a huge hit in Holland, and then it spread out like crazy. That was a huge track. Yeah. in the United States, it especially was. in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that that track wasn't played on radio. Like nowadays, that would be a huge radio hit as well. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah. played out on the radio. No, not at all. Because it was, I think, when that song was coming out around that time, you know, because dance music took a big hiatus in New York City for a long mm. time, especially like at least on a commercial level, because yeah. hip hop was mainstream. Um, and then, uh, so when that record was coming out, dance music was not. I, I mean, that's when it was just sort of changing over. I would say in New York City, at least on the commercial tip. Mm, mm -hmm. um, but that record was huge. But yeah. the clubs rocked it. Every club yeah. was playing that Every record. club was rocking. Yeah. That. In Holland, that song got played too much. Like every set, and then four or five times a night, it was a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, you got the two songs. You got to put your hands up for Detroit and the Body Rock track. And the Body Rock track, yeah. That, that, like that was our time. We started DJing, and yeah, th those were like the, the, the goals. Yep. Yeah, you yeah. could download a rip of that, like a DJ was playing Put Your Hands Up For Detroit and Body Rocks, and they were already mixed, so it was easy for us, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beginning of the pre-mix era. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these guys that you looked up to, you you had the pleasure of working with some of them. Yeah. yeah. Who Actually, some of the people that you've worked with on music? Wow. Well, the first time we actually thought maybe there's something more in your career than just like a hobby DJ is that when uh, we posted a track on the forum of Leibach Luke and he played it in the, one of his sets at Sensation, uh -huh. like the big party in the arenas. And uh, yeah, then we thought, all right, there's actually, yeah, something happening here. And then we started producing. And yeah, back in the days we worked with like guys like Afrojack. And uh, yeah, now we, we uh, produce with, um, yeah, wow. Where do we start? Carnage, uh, help me out here. Flusterdamas, Kuhn. Uh, well, that's what you guys are, are in New York City doing in terms yeah, of yeah. the yeah. studio. You guys are working with Flusterdamas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to hook up with people at the spot still to make music. Yeah. It's, it's, in the end, it's better than true on, online what, stuff. What motivates you guys in terms of your studio work? Like when you guys are in the studio, I mean, what... Uh, well, first of all, we love to be in the studio, so yeah. that's a huge benefit for us. Like, so you're in the studio every day, you'd say? Yeah, when we're not touring or don't have appointments or whatever, uh, we're in the studio. And like, yeah. we, we, we love it when we have a Sunday off, like today, and yeah. that's also like in, when we're back in Holland. But we're in the studio every day, because if you're not working, somebody else will, you know? So, yeah. uh, and we love to do it. And we, we love to have like a, a normal workday rhythm, so we start early, especially for DJs. We like it to be in the studio around 9:30, 10 ish, wow, and then we stop at for, yeah, for and then DJ. we then we stop at six. Yeah. So Mondays are hard, yeah. like especially Mondays when we really hard. when we did shows on Sunday. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah, then it's hard, but it's good because you you have the same life as your girlfriend or like with your, so you can see your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Like friends a lot of colleagues, they they live like zombies. They don't know how they do it. They they wake up at four and they go to the studio at eight and then work all night. Yeah, night owls. Yeah. yeah, night owls, yeah. We're not, we're yeah. working like during the day. Yeah, we well, like There's a lot that. of business that goes on behind all this. So there's a lot of stuff to take care of during normal hours. Like yeah. yeah, that's why we eventually, well, we started with the night shift kind of thing, but eventually we thought, no, that's not a good way. So if you want to get shit done, you have to do it during the day. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the time when people pick up their phones and stuff. Yeah. So I seen some clips. You guys played some monster parties, some some festivals. Like, yeah, we, some yeah. of the festivals <laughs> that you worked. Uh, we did Tomorrowland, Tomorrow World, uh, Mysteryland, uh, Defcon, Defcon, some big shows in uh, Mexico. Um, All yeah, the future wow. people, yeah, a lot of so festivals. What was it like taking the stage for the first time in a festival that size? That well, was pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, that w yeah. I, I, I remember Your heart we. Racing? we Oh yeah, the man. The first time we did it was in in Holland itself, and well, my nephew was throwing like big parties, and it was like a big 
big city square mm -hmm. and we were, were, I guess, just 18 or something. Something like that. Yeah. And the first time you come up, you're like, oh shit. And the, the first moment is the first record that's like the most. A little shaky, right? The shaky part. <laughs> and after that, when people start reacting, it's, yeah, you go from there and yeah, it's, just it's all gone. Yeah, build off the energy. Yeah. Yeah. And still, like, I, I, in the way of being nervous or stuff like that, how bigger the crowd is, the less nervous I yeah. get because really? it's so not personal if you know what i mean if if you would play a show here for let's say 50 people smaller venues are yeah tougher. then everybody's looking and then like yeah, i'm quite confident by my skills and stuff but like i was like hey, why is the guy not moving why is he looking <laughs> at me like when you, know, you could see wrong? someone not dancing then you start yeah. to question yeah. 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 yeah and that changed because back in the days we used to play like every night in the <laughs> club in our town and yeah you, you get like it's, it's a routine kind of thing and afterwards you're doing the big shows, the big shows, and then you come back at a small club and you're like, oh shit, this was actually harder than the big shows. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's- But Holland is known for like having very big music festivals. So yeah, you know, like but it's getting too absurd to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I think this year in Holland, there were almost a thousand festivals. That's like crazy if you imagine that a place like, like New York a couple every maybe weekend. has a few yeah. festivals yeah. during a year. Well, f it got a little saturated here with the yeah. festivals also yeah. over the past couple of years, but it started to slow down now. <coughs> and the sound is starting to change in New York okay. when it comes to house music. And I mean, you know, in, at least in the States, I mean, festivals in terms of DJs was unheard of. I mean, mm. yeah. never, we never, I think <laughs> the first introduction of festivals in the States was when there were raves. Yeah. Mm. That was the first. Uh, iteration of any type of Yeah, but of they festival. didn't call it a festival, they called it a no, rave. it was a rave. Right, yeah. it was a rave. And, and in which time era was that? What happened? Like early in which 90s. time? Early 90s. Yeah, early 90s, 93, you know, <coughs> techno first came over to the U.S. They, you know, they started this whole rave scene. And that was big for a while. Mm -hmm. where it would be, And they would mostly, they were underground. They weren't even like mainstream in the beginning. So like you wouldn't even know where the party was going to be until maybe a couple of weeks or even a couple of days before the party. Yeah. Um, but I would say the whole EDM craze and, uh, and the EZU, yeah. you know, over the last, I guess, seven to eight years yep. uh, is when the festivals have really taken place yep. in the States. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so you guys have a uh, record label. Yeah. It's called Clash. Yep. K. Yeah, with right? a K. Yeah. Um, and you guys have three singles that are coming out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we released our first track, like, on the label a week ago and like this Friday is already the next release and um, yeah we got we got so much stuff done in the studio late last year and now uh, yeah we got everything lined up and it's so it's such a luxe feeling to know that you can release it when you want to yeah of course. And, uh, we have a great team so yeah we listen to what everybody likes and uh, loves and uh, yeah very confident about it yeah and we want to keep up the pace so like not like every two months a release. We want to do like every two weeks, probably. So you're gonna release a record every two weeks. Yeah. yeah now yeah. we are. Now yeah. we definitely are. Now we definitely are, and we're gonna build it up with our own tracks, and then in 2017 we're trying to broaden our horizon and get our friends, which we think of are really good at producing as well, and bring them onto the bring label. Them on yeah, to the but label. that's to start with music and not by how many Instagram followers you got yeah. and like. Fuck that shit, you know what I mean? Like, it's about the sound. when I get back to the yeah. music, yeah. Th if somebody looks like a monster, literally, and his music is good, it will be released on our label. So it's not about looks or marketing or whatever. If it's just good music, that's what we are stand, want to stand S for. So with your own music, you must be sitting on a ton of tracks right now. If you're looking to release songs every two weeks. Yeah, yeah. We, we did a lot of work this past year working on our own style. That's yeah. great. We could release on like the, the labels we want to, but it's always such a pain, like like the negotiations, and you always are, um, how do you say it? Yeah, the label decides when they want to release, and yeah, and you want to keep keep ahead of the of the of the the trend, and if you release with a big label and the label wants to yeah schedule it in their way, you miss trends or you're not the first anymore, and yeah, we want to be pioneers, not the guys that. Are there are there people buying vinyl in Amsterdam? Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. So I would you release these singles on vinyl also? If we have the money yeah. to, to press them, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But it's that's there's, uh, there's vinyl stores popping up all over the place. Yeah, in same in right all. Now. We yeah. saw the Fool's Gold record store. Is yeah. that like literally a Fool's Gold record yeah. store? Oh, yeah, cool. that's dope. 
Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, and we, we've talked about it on the show, I mean, vinyl now is uh, becoming a hobby for a lot of, a lot of people. They're collecting it. Mm. Not yep. so much DJs. Yeah, also more, like, you know, uh, like everybody's like getting into vinyl. There's like this whole hipster craze <laughs> in, uh, you know, throughout the whole tri-state area of Brooklyn um, where people are just getting into vinyl. And now there's actually vinyl parties too that are popping up in New York. Where, like, oh, really? Uh, there's a, there's like exchange parties, parties? 45 parties where people just come and play like their collection of 45s. Okay, and, dope. Like Sick. vinyl parties that are popping up all over New York. Well, yeah, the funny thing is that um, I got like the half of my my parents collection they gave it to me and uh i bought some old stuff from people and now i'm listening through it and i'm like oh fuck yeah, that's cool yeah. Music. yeah and it it doesn't um like if it's on a hard drive or a cd even it doesn't have that same sound right? yeah and it it it, it, get, it gets lost during the amount of time so cds I, I remember i burned cds when we started playing it doesn't work anymore because the the stuff I don't know how a CD actually works, but it falls off. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, the sticker. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then they they got worn out, but the, the vinyls are like thirty years old and they still work perfectly well, fine. It's just something to be said about the sound of a vinyl yeah. like that, just that openness, yeah, the warmness. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Of how you just like when the when you put the needle yeah, down, it's all feelings. And you just you <laughs> yeah. feel it yeah. in the club, you know, just on a on a, on a nice sound system. Um, so. What do you guys got coming up in terms of uh, your touring? Well, after uh, after this America run, we're coming back to Amsterdam. We actually have an fe outside festival in Amsterdam, like in the 7th of October. Okay. It's crazy because the weather is pretty shitty then. <laughs> and then it's uh, AD, like Amsterdam Dancing Fan, which is, uh, of course, as people from Amsterdam, huge for us. Yep. We do a lot of shows and cool stuff because everything in Amsterdam is a venue during AD. So imagine it here like every store like we we once saw carl cox playing in a clothing store yeah that was like it's crazy amazing. there were 40 people like yeah. and no nobody was invited it was just for people who passed by there were these guys putting people in look man carl cox playing what yeah. <laughs> like we we knew the guy who threw the party so we had luck to come in it was really yep. cool and that's the cool thing about ad i'm really looking forward to it last year we missed it because we were touring and now we're gonna do that. And after that, we go to Australia for two weeks, and then we go to Asia. So we do Japan, Thailand, China. Indonesia. Yeah. So you guys have a busy schedule. Very busy. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, it's coming like, it's coming at a place right now. We're really happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. And we love to tour and do gigs and stuff. So and yeah. see stuff, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to travel. And, and yeah, see, yeah, like cities like this or yeah, all the different stories that so do you find yourself when you're traveling around the world and you're playing in different countries, um, in terms of your music selection and the sets that you guys play, um, are you changing it up in different cities or countries that you guys are playing in or Oh yeah. Yeah, a li little bit, you know, like we that's that's uh, we play a lot of our own stuff, so for sure we will keep playing our own stuff everywhere in the world but if you compare for example america is more like with our shows they're like more into the bass sound so we go a little bit deeper on that side and uh, if you play in europe sometimes the, the crowd is more into housey stuff so we try to to uh keep that in mind we're not followers like we'd, we'd love to do our own thing but like yeah if you can keep it in mind it's it's good because you're a dj you're playing for it yeah and we make we make yeah. little edits yeah so if you know what track is popping we we make an edit, make yeah. an edit that flips over into a track of ourselves yeah. and that kind of stuff just to make it to get the connection with the crowd towards our music yeah eventually yeah, yeah, sure. yeah not Smart. choosing the top 10 but yeah the, the tracks were like 11 and lower yeah that's a cool thing like yeah. everybody can play a beaver song yeah and i love his music but if you already hear it three or four times during a night, why would we play it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so going to start with a Bieber track tonight. <laughs> 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 we love Justin Bieber. Yeah. Um, so this is your second time in New York. Your first time um, you guys actually played out in Long, in Island. Long Island. Yeah, yeah, man. What were you doing in Long yeah, Island? Yeah, what were you doing in Long Island? <laughs> well, well, we had some really good dinner there. 
Yeah, like Italian a, food. Ooh, yeah, that was it amazing. It was good, but so you came to Long Island to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. What I, was I, the I, venue you were doing in Long Island? It was Empire. called Empire. Empire. Okay. Yeah. To be honest, it's the first tour, so you never know what or how or yeah. So we didn't know anything, and it's at Long Island, New York. So you, like for us, that's like. Um, yeah, New York. Yeah, we're so, going to New York. Yeah, we're going to yeah, New York. We're going like, to play yeah, there. Yeah, we're going to New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that, that, that's how it goes. The city's so. like 100 miles, miles away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still New York. Still the state of New York. Yeah, and so, yeah. Yeah, it was our first show. It was not that busy. It was like a half full club, but yeah, it was the first introduction for us with the U.S. So you guys were in and out, though. You came in, you went yeah. to Long Island, you did your And game. then our second show in the U.S. was Tomorrow World. Yeah, so, so there was a big difference. <laughs> yeah. So we get we got from, like, this, this, yeah, I wouldn't say shady club, but a bit of a, like, a difficult kind of vibe to a big festival. Yeah. So for us, and we actually almost missed our plane because there was something wrong with the plane and, uh, like, the, uh, the, the door, the the door of the plane went open during take no, off wow. so and we had to catch our show and it was like um yeah we came in like one hour before our show and then the driver got lost in, on the festival terrain and we had to play a show back to back with the Some dj the after us yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's that's how our first i got stuck by uh be stung by a bee during the set yeah. oh, man. <laughs> gotta love america man yeah. Yeah. yeah how do you guys like new york uh, I, we love I really it. love it yeah man. we just this week because we're producing and we're we're Dutch so we bike a lot yeah. so we bike a lot around city bike city, city bike squad city, man city, city bike squad, squad. Yeah. there's yeah. like a bike craze over the last year and a half right but yeah. now over the last like I think like they started city bike last year but this year it sort of like took off and they're putting bikes everywhere yeah. right on the corner yeah they have them yeah. right on the corner there's like no place to park anymore because there's bikes everywhere <laughs> Yep, and that's what we do. So we drive around the city and go to the studio and we see how all the people go to work and go back from work and we, yeah, we feel a bit like New Yeah, York today we, we saw the 9-11 memorial. Yeah. That made a huge impact on me, man. That was, yeah, it was it's something else to yeah, see. Amazing, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Imagine that. And for us, it's like, it's different, but cool in a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that's great. So, uh, so where uh, where do we think Dirt Caps is going to be in a couple of years from now, in terms of what yeah. you guys are doing? And well, I think to be honest that we will play in your future club. Huh? Like nice, future that's future right. Function house, yeah. yeah, that's a deal. Uh, right, like an you just booked us. You know that, right? Party for our Madison Square Garden show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Let's do that. Or maybe do the Barclay Center. I mean, that's I like where your head's at. Yeah. 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 Or well, that's like great. A, shot, a shot bar if it goes wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys prepare something for us tonight, or are you just? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let you hear some uh, some new stuff, of course. Unreleased and, uh, stuff. I think we're gonna uh, yeah gonna do a little bit of throwback to stuff we like. Take it easy. Yeah. But yeah. like yeah. Okay, cool. Gonna be a cool one. Well, I guess. we're looking forward to it, and we thank you guys coming down. Yeah, man. Thank we you. Thank Appreciate you for it. having us. Yeah. yeah. And we're we're you know we're excited to have you at the function house, and you know the the mo of the function house is. You play whatever you want. This is We're your gonna. show. Thank you. This is your platform. <laughs> Let's do, do that. Yeah, man. All so right. Thank you. Cool. All right. All right. We're going to take a <coughs> two-minute break. We're going to get Dirt Caps uh, on the decks, and they're going to rock it out for us. Bye.